So, Cara, <clears throat> this is your new book, Murder in the Latin Quarter, and I know that you have had each of your books set in a different neighborhood in Paris, and one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is, you know, from a health perspective, there's all this new stuff coming out about how you should try and stimulate your brain. That it's like the rest of your body, if you don't use it, you lose it, and so more and more there's this burgeoning field of sort of brain research. And um, I wanted to talk to you about it because one of the things I find most fascinating about your books is that not only are they a great read, but you really feel like you're somewhere else in the world. Um, and first, I wanted to ask just for my own curiosity, how do you pull that off? I, um, I have a double espresso. <laughs> <laughs> That's a brain stimulation right there. It's right there, and I try to use my senses to stimulate me. Um, because when I write in San Francisco, I need to go back to Paris. Mm -hmm. So I have a little digital tape recorder that I bring with me to Paris, and a lot of times I just record, you know, on the bus, in the metro, in the cafe. Mm -hmm. You know, where you hear the sounds of like the milk steamer, the whoosh, and you have people talking, and and I record that. So when I'm at home and I'm at the in front of the computer. I play that and I'm back in that cafe because I take notes, I, you know, I have a journal and I have maps and lots of photographs, but again, it's about stimulating me to be back there at that moment. I'll remember, yeah, I remember. I was sitting there at the table and then the plumber came in and he was talking to the, the banker in the pinstripe suit and how they were talking and things I may not have written in my journal, but it just takes me there. I need kind of auditory stimulation. Um, you know, that really helps me a lot to hear those sounds and go back there. I have to tell you, that's really fascinating because actually just this month, they, for the first time, believe they recorded a memory being made wow. on an MRI scan. Wow. And um, it has really been known for a long time, in fact, just from old wives' tales, that there are certain sensory stimulations that bring back memories in a rush. So what I find really fascinating is this whole concept that's almost futuristic that you experience something it, and while you're experience it, experiencing it in Paris, you record it, then you re-stimulate those same neurons on a different side of the world. You then communicate that into text, and then I buy your book, and I am hearing and feeling the same thing yeah. back on the other side of the world. It's like this weird transportation thing where we actually are teleporting people um, through our neurons. Well, you were talking about smell. Smell yeah. is very evocative to me, and I don't. You're the surgeon. You're the doctor here, but my th I'm, when I get a smell, it evokes so much in me, and I do get this rush, and I am back in this place. Yes. Yeah. And my husband said to me, he said, "Well, you must be very low on the primate chain because <laughs> <laughs> your sense of smell isn't it like it's actually a, no, not no, true. It's, yeah. it's actually very close to the part of your brain that does make memories, but it doesn't mean you're low on the evolutionary tree. <laughs> you're actually that's the way we humans are wired. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I find it really fascinating that if we put you in a functional MRI scanner and gave you your little auditory you know, device where you have recorded memories from Paris, you know, sounds, moments, who knows what's lighting up? Yeah. But I'll bet when you then turn around and try to write your passages, those same places are still firing. Um, mm -hmm. It's almost like a, do you feel like it's a trance? I, it kind of, it, it just puts me there, and I'm there in that cafe, and I remember what the light was like coming through the window, and, and you know, what time of day it was, and, what, you know, did I have, was I just taking my coat off, because yeah. it, it was a fall afternoon, or was I putting my scarf on to leave, and, and you know, what were people doing, and, and, and you know, the cars outside, and, and, and who I was, what, it all just comes back. These are little things you're not constantly detailing in a journal, yeah. but you're there, and you remember, and you remember, oh, and then that really interesting old woman came in and started talking to this man, and I overheard some of the conversation, and things that I would not, again, have thought about unless I'm hearing that, and I'm, it, I'm just kind of back there. And I have to tell you, the other reason that's neurologically fascinating is because if you really want to improve your memory, memory aids are often multi-sensory, mm -hmm. or uh, they use other parts of your brain, you know, and they rein you get reinforcement um, through other things. So the way you retain memories, if you want to retain them on purpose, is to actually link them to other things. 
and there are lots of books about how to do that and occupational therapists who help people do that as they're starting to lose their memory mm -hmm. that you're intuitively figuring it out on your own and bringing a little bit of Paris back with you to San Francisco thank you well and touching the old stone in Paris because a lot of it's from limestone you know and it's been eroded over time in a certain way and it's got this pockmark kind of texture wow. and you know it's you know three four hundred you know how many hundred years old and you're touching it and there's that feel, and it's still a little gritty, and it, but it's got these special time-worn pockmarks. Wow. And, and, and I always like to feel the stone, because mm -hmm. I feel I'm touching history. I mean, this was here it's so a hundred years ago, and I'm touching it now. You know? wow. And I have to say, I think that is a really good piece of advice for anybody listening to this who has someone they value in their family, someone maybe very old, and they're hoping to get an oral history of their mm -hmm. life. Yeah. If you can give them something that evokes that time and place, and sometimes it's just a clue, you know, or a question. Or a suggestion. What, yes, what did the kitchen smell like when your mother was cooking? Um, what did it feel like when you were playing with your brothers? Uh, you can often unlock a treasure trove of oral history just from those kind of sensory details. Do you remember the movie um, about the mouse in Paris that became the cook? What oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. What was that called? Uh, and yeah. so at the end, the last scene is when this, ter this famous critic oh, comes yeah. and we have a ratatouille. <laughs> ratatouille. <laughs> ratatouille. <Yeah. laughs> ratatouille. And he eats the ratatouille and it's like his mother made. Remember and he goes yes. off and yes. the taste buds bring him and right there. And he weeps. Yes. Yes. And, and so that's his childhood. Yeah. In a bowl. That's fabulous. So I would just say to everyone, if you can't afford a vacation this year, <laughs> the thing to do is to buy Carr's books. You can buy the most recent one or you can start at the beginning, but you will definitely feel like you are in Paris. And they're a great read. Thank so you. Thanks for taking the time today. My pleasure. Okay.